All right, with this forecast video update on this Tuesday, October the 27th, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you guys had a wonderful Tuesday, and it's been yet again another warm day here across Central Florida. Uh, some locations, once again, did see some showers and even rebels of thunder that produced some uh, uh, heavier showers earlier today as well, especially west of Orlando, but that's pretty much uh, fade away. Uh, but we'll take a look at the radar here in just a second and see who's seen a little bit, a little bit of that rainy activity. But we expect more of the same as we head towards the next few days. But we'll be tracking a front that's going to be moving in as we head towards, at least by the Halloween weekend, that's going to allow temperatures to cool down. But we'll have that update on that here in just a little bit, along with the, along with the uh, update on Zeta. But first, th but first things first, let's go ahead and take a look what's happening right now on the radar. Let's see what's going on right now in central Florida this evening. And uh, as you can see right now, as, as you can see right now, that almost almost all of us is looking dry. Not all, but some of us, as maybe I should say, except right here back over towards the uh, western part of our viewing area. Basically, once you go back towards Marion, Sumter, and Lake Counties, there are still some spottier showers happening right now for you guys, and also uh, some right here down around northern Polk County. But if I put this in motion, it, it looks like these uh, spottier showers. We're waiting for the radar to load up here, which is to give it just a second. And here, and here it is. Here it is. So as you can see right now, these showers right now are, mo are moving from southeast to north and west uh, quickly at about 50 to 55 miles per hour. And again, they will continue at least for the next uh, hour or two until they fade away by late evening into the early portions of the overnight hours. So if you've got any plans for the rest of this evening, if you live west of uh, Orlando, again, the rain's not going to last longer, so don't cancel them. But we'll go ahead and we'll submit a little closer here and see who uh, and see who's seen some of these uh, showers right now. And as you can see, we got one here that's basically right along Highway 50 and south of the Florida's Turnpike, right along the Sumter into the Lake County line. And we'll do some tracking on that uh, for you guys so you know where that's heading to next. Again, it's moving due northwest. Once again, folks, at about 50 to 55 miles per hour, and that will give locations such as fix the track of the showers. It looks like it'll be impacting places like Sumterville at about 819, Lake Penasofke at about 821, and Coleman at 822. So heads up for you guys that you may see maybe some quick moving showers moving to your direction in the next uh, uh, several minutes. Now let's go ahead and take a look, uh, or, or maybe I should say let's go ahead and put another track uh, uh, right here with this shower that is about to be moving in from the Polk into the Lake County line. And as you can see, it's moving, again, in the same general direction, moving from southeast to the north and west at about uh, 50 to 55 miles per hour. So that will be impacting places such as uh, Clay Sink, which is the only location that's on the list here, at about uh, 824. All right, so as we pin up to the north, like I said before, we got more showers up here in Marion County. we got some right here in northern Lake County, too, just to the east of the villages, but mostly the shower activity it's up and around the Ocala community, especially around downtown and north, between 301 and I-75. And, and, and that should be moving out of our viewing area, viewing area perhaps in the next uh, several minutes or so. But we'll still do the same thing, do some more tracking with these uh, spottier showers. Again, moving quickly to the north and west at 50 to 55, and that will be impacting places such as, let me fix the track once again. It'll be impacting places like uh, Fairfield at 811. Flemington at 815 and Cookwood at about 825. So heads up for you folks if you live in northern Marion or perhaps uh, uh, near Gainesville, which is out of our viewing area, that you may see some showers moving to your direction perhaps in the next uh, several minutes. But like I said before, other than that, uh, most of the viewing area is looking dry, including right here in Orlando. We did see some heavier showers earlier this afternoon, but that's pretty much fade out. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the rainfall totals we saw today here in Central Florida since we saw some heavier uh, downpours and some spots. And as you can see, uh, the good totals was basically right over here in Lake County. I mean, they're still minor, but it would still produce a good amount uh, right in this area from the, from the uh, thunder showers that popped up later, or not later, uh, earlier today. So basically in the dark green shaded colors, it does indicate as I pinpoint that, it shows that this area has picked up between uh, basically about one, about 1 1.75 and close to two inches of rain, basically, just in the north and east of Clearmont. So that's a pretty good amount of rain uh, for these folks over in this general direction. But farther northwest you go, basically, once you go up towards Leesburg, 
and right just to the north of the Florida's Turnpike, it looks like these locations have picked up between about three quarters to 1.27 inches of rain uh, from those heavier showers earlier today. So that's a, again, that's a pretty good amount, but again, it was, it's still low. But other places that saw spottier showers today pretty much saw some big, pretty much just some lighter totals like 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 we have been seeing over the past uh, several days. So basically, stretching back door down towards the attractions near Disney to Kissimmee and right over towards Sumter County, and it looks like in Western Marion County, have seen big, uh, have seen rain totals between three quarters to perhaps maybe close to an inch of rain, with mostly about a half inch or less. So there you have it on that. So let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, temperatures we saw today in Central Florida, because like I said before, just, just a few minutes ago, it's been another warm day here in our viewing area. So we're going back to about uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon. And uh, as you can see here in Orlando, we actually did hit a high temperature today at about 87. So it's been pretty, well, it's been pretty warm here in the metro and near the attractions. Farther south you go into Kissimmee, it looks like you folks had uh, have seen temperatures in the mid-80s earlier today, too. Uh, Lakeland, it looks like you've, you've seen a high temperature around 86 this afternoon for you for you folks in the villages. Also for Ocala, let's see, uh, Stanford, Titusville, Daytona Beach, and perhaps Palm Coast. It looks like you folks have seen some 80s, to, some 80s today as well, but it looks like the villages actually got close to 90 uh, this afternoon, but that's still warm. So it's been, like I said, it's been a, it's been another warm day here in Central Florida, and we expect more of this, more of the same as we head towards the next uh, couple of days as we head towards the rest of this week. But if we take a look at our current temperatures right now in Central Florida at this 8 p.m. hour, as you can see, we are basically uh, almost almost uh, we're almost in the 80s basically for some of us in Central Florida with basically uh, Orlando with the current temperature at 81. Sorry, I got I got a note. I just got a notification, but but it's no but it's, it's no worries. Anyways, we got 82 right now in Kissimmee. We got 80 in Titusville. Uh, same thing for Sanford. 81 is the current temperature in Daytona Beach. We got 80 in Palm Coast, and temperatures are cooled off because of these showers. Uh, basically, in the villages, in Ocala, where the group folks are in are sitting in the 70s. All right. So since we got more hit or miss showers in the forecast for the forecast for the next couple of days, we'll go ahead and take a look at future cast and show you and show you who may see at least a little bit of rainy activity for both tomorrow and Thursday. And remember, if you're just coming into Facebook Live on this uh, Tuesday night, remember don't forget to uh, go ahead as always and share this feed to your other Facebook followers. Because remember, my motto is sharing is caring. And before we also get started with future cast, I'm going to go ahead and share this uh, this feed to one of my other pages. So. Hang on just a second, and we'll get started. All right, so here is Futurecast. And like I said before, if you live just to the west of Orlando, that's where the showers are still happening right now. We'll continue for the next hour until they fade out. And as we, but as we head towards the overnight uh, hours and perhaps into the first half of your Wednesday, we'll start off dry with one glow temperatures in the 70s. Cannot without maybe a coastal shower along the coast of Brevard County, but under the net, we'll just keep our conditions. Uh, uh, again, dry to start off the day. And then as we head towards the rest of the day tomorrow, it looks like we'll see some more showers developing, basically mostly west of uh, I-4, as you can tell. So basically from Claremont up towards the villages, up towards Ocala, that's where you guys can see maybe a few isolated spotty showers again by tomorrow afternoon. Other than that, it'll be partly sunny with temperatures again warming, warming things up into the upper 80s and low 90s. And then heading into the evening, if you got any plans... Uh, you're good to go, but remember, if you live west of I-4, you still can see maybe a few showers left over, but again, they should be moving quickly, so it's not going to be raining all evening, so just keep that in mind. But other than that, not too bad. And then as we head towards the rest of the night tomorrow night, and to start off early Thursday, we'll be uh, seeing, again, another warm one with low temperatures in the 70s, 
if you notice there on FeatureCast, that there may be a few showers possible to start off Thursday if you live right along the coast of Brevard or Volusia counties. But other than that, we'll just keep our weather dry uh, to start off that morning. And then as we head, head into the uh, afternoon, yet again, we'll see another batch of, ice, of isolated showers move back into central Florida. According to future cast, there could be some in and around portions of Orange County, including Orlando, perhaps over near Kissimmee, uh, let's say near Daytona, perhaps near Deltona, and also around the villages. Could see maybe a few showers uh, by Thursday afternoon, but otherwise it'll be partly sunny with temperatures again. Staying warm in the upper 80s into the lower 90s, and it looks like the showers could continue until sunset. And so if you have any plans for the nighttime hours, it looks like uh, you may be fine. But notice on Featurecast, as we approach midnight, late Thursday night, that uh, it, wants to sh- it, does want to, it does want to point out maybe a few more spottier showers along I-75 and from Ocala, stretch it back down towards Sumter County. And it looks like there could be maybe some uh, heavier showers that could try to develop again as we head towards 2 a.m. And that could be ahead of our cold front that's going to move in by that morning. So ahead of that, there could be some heavier downpours at some locations, uh, basically over towards northeastern Lake County perhaps from Palm Coast and perhaps stretching back down towards uh, Sumter and Lake Counties. So could see maybe a little, bit, a little bit of a wet start to Friday here in Central Florida, uh, but it's not going to be like, you know, anything too significant. And again, that's ahead of a front that's going to move in uh, by daybreak. So so if you're been wanting to know when cooler weather is going to come, it's coming, which I'm going to talk more about that, more about that here in just a little bit when we look at the models on the GFS. All right, so that's so that's that. So let's go ahead and take a look and see where Zeta is at right now because it is still happening in the Gulf. In the Gulf. So let's turn on the uh, tropical satellite and the track of the storm as well. And uh, I know uh, yesterday Zeta was, Zeta was a Cat 1 hurricane, but it's now weakening into a tropical storm with winds uh, still remaining about 65 to near 70 miles per hour as it still moves to the north and west of 14 as it moves out of Merida and Cancun. But it looks like, according to the track of the storm, that it could still strength strength back up into a Cat 1 by overnight late tonight into early tomorrow morning, and will stay as a Cat 1 as we get through at least the early early part of Thursday. So it looks like uh, over towards New Orleans, or perhaps over near uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, where there are hurricane warnings uh, in effect, could could see Zeta remain to a Cat 1 by late tomorrow into the morning hours on Thursday before it downgraded to a tropical storm by daybreak on Thursday before, you know, moving up to Alabama and Georgia where there are tropical storm watches already in place, including places like Birmingham and Atlanta, where they're expecting not just tropical storm force winds, but also some heavy rains that may cause some flash flooding. So that so that's for Thursday. And then it looks like you'll be weakening more to a tropical depression by Thursday afternoon as it uh, moves up towards the eastern part of Tennessee to the Appalachian Mountains and perhaps near the Ohio Valley, where there could be some heavier rains from the remnants of Zeta, not just for the Appalachians, but across the Mid-Atlantic, including places like D.C. and near parts of New Jersey and Delaware. But according to the track, it looks like it could strengthen back to a tropical storm by early Friday morning. So, yeah, so that's something we'll be watching here for the next several days. But thankfully... Not an issue for Central Florida in the next several days, so that is a good thing. <clears throat> and, of course, there may be some severe weather across parts of the Gulf states, too, by tomorrow, where, there, where the SPC has actually posted a marginal risk where maybe a few quick spin-up tornadoes are possible. So that's something we'll watch closely, too. So that's an update on that, and let's go ahead and take a, let's go ahead and take a, let's take a look and see what's happening uh, otherwise in the tropics and the Atlantic and as you can see, right now in the Caribbean, uh, things are pretty quiet right now, but there's some smaller waves that are trying to develop right here just far east of uh, the British and the U.S. Virgin Islands and also far east of Antigua and Barbuda. And there's some right here far east of St. Lucia, so that's something we could watch too. But other than that, it's nothing look, it, doesn't look too any, it doesn't look too significant to worry about here in the next coming days or so. And if we pan over to the east more... As you can see over towards Cabo, uh, nothing's going on uh, right now there. And that goes for the same thing right along the west coast, of, west coast of Africa. So, yep, looking quiet there. And that means that, you know, we're getting close to wind down the peak season, which is already is. But we're, all, we're, also getting, but we're also getting close to end hurricane season, which ends on November 30th. So, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's, been, pretty, uh, it's been a pretty busy season for the, for the Atlantic uh, 
you know, this this year. But I, I guess we're lucky that we we didn't have, we didn't have to deal with any we did not have to deal with any hurricanes here in Florida. So that's a good thing. All right. So that's an up, so that's the update on the tropics tonight. And before we take a before we take a last check, a last look at the radar before we get right to the GFS, I want to show you this that uh, there are some winter storm uh, conditions happening right now back over towards uh, the central plains, as you can tell, as you can see in these uh, pink shaded or purple shaded colors, I should say, basically almost the central part in western Oklahoma into parts of the Texas Panhandle. That is an ice storm warning where they're where they where they have been dealing with a lot of uh, freezing rain and sleet all day today and maybe since yesterday. But still causes, you know, causing some more power outages and also still some slick roads. So pretty nasty stuff there over in parts of, again, Texas and Oklahoma, but over in the pink shaded colors from the panhandle of Oklahoma and throughout the rest of the Texas panhandle uh, and back towards New Mexico, that is a winter storm warning where snow continues to fall. So, yep, so it's a pretty early, it's a pretty early wintry weather is happening right now in that area. So if we got any uh, travel plans uh, coming up here in the next coming days or so, or perhaps in Maybe the next day, you may want to check your flight uh, st uh, ratings or status, I should say, just to make sure if your flight's okay uh, to, you know, travel from, let's say, for example, from Orlando to Oklahoma City or perhaps back down towards near Lubbock, Texas, which I know there's possibility. I know there's a possibility that these flights could be delayed or canceled because of some of that nastiness going on right now there. So, yeah. so I just wanted to show you what, what's happening there. So. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the radar again before we get right to the GFS. Because if you're just coming into uh, Facebook Live right now, if you missed seeing the radar just a little while ago, we're here to, well, here it is again. And as you can see, like I said before, we're pretty much dry for almost the, for almost the viewing, for almost for the viewing area. But again, there's still a few showers left over here, basically back over towards uh, Sumter, Lake, and Marion counties. But again, they should be able to wind down possibly in the next hour or so. So there you have it on there. All right, now to the GFS. Let's get in, let's get into uh, Friday, and again, that's when this front should be should be moving through uh, Central Florida. So we so we'll see some showers possibly in the at least for the first half of the day early Friday, and there could be some heavier downpours too. But I don't expect any severe weather with that system, so that's a good thing. So once that uh, gets close, so once the showers do get going, get going by early Friday, and that front that's going to allow temperatures to cool down by Friday afternoon. And speaking of temperatures, let's go ahead and take a look at the highs that, we're, that we might be expecting for that day on Halloween Eve. And looky there, we're talking about temperatures dropping from upper 80s down into the upper 70s and lower 80s. So it's going to feel a whole lot nice as we head towards Friday afternoon. So, so after at least a little bit of a wet morning that morning, it looks like we're going to see things improve and, and feel at least the taste of fall uh, to end October. So if you're expecting to be out and about uh, Friday afternoon... Uh, I think you'll like it because we're, we're talking about some lower humidity and perhaps uh, temperatures dropping from summer to fall like it. This is where we should be, at least for late October and perhaps as we're about to enter November. So looking good there. And notice farther north you go into the Mississippi Valley region, temperatures will, temperatures will cool off into the 60s and 70s after uh, the impacts of Zeta will move out of that area uh, by the afternoon. All right, uh, heading into the weekend, which is Halloween, by the way, for Saturday. So if you're expecting to be out and about doing some big uh, festivities, perhaps some uh, different uh, modified offerings that you may have going on that day, uh, it looks like uh, you'll be fine. So it looks like we'll see some dry weather on Saturday. But if you notice on the GFS, there may be a few isolated coastal showers along the coast of Brevard or perhaps parts of Flackler counties. But other than that, we'll just keep our weather dry uh, here in the viewing area. The good chance of rain, though, is going to stay farther south into southern Florida. But no issues here, and at least where, at least where we live. So, so good weather happening for that day on on Halloween. And as we take a look at our temperatures for highs down below, and we will stay mostly a bit cooler, with upper 70s for some, and others in the lower 80s. So, so get out and enjoy these uh, perfect conditions uh, uh, if, if, we, if we have some as we head towards the Halloween weekend. All right, uh, as we head into the day after Halloween, which is November 1st, if you're going to be out and about uh, pretty much that day, it looks like we may have to we may have to maintain a chance for a few showers, but it's not going to rain all day. So don't cancel any plans if you have some on Sunday. 
to kick off November because it's not going to rain. It's not going to be it's not going to be a total washout. So just note that. But still, the rain chances will stay lower with, with just about a 20 to a 30 percent coverage, especially if you live along and east of I-4. The western part may be, may be staying dry for the day on Sunday, but otherwise it'll be partly sunny besides the showers. And as we take a look at the highs, we may start to heat things back up just a little bit, but not looking way warmer like we've been seeing lately, in, including today, or like we're, like we're going to see in the next couple of days. So we're going to maintain the high temperatures in the mid-80s on Sunday. As you can see here, farther north you go, the cooler weather will continue for the Florida Panhandle and across the interior Mississippi Valley region with mostly 60s and 70s, which is not too bad up there. So there you have it on that. And then as we head into Monday of next week, this is no November 2nd, it looks like we'll still see yet again maybe just a few isolated showers possible, but not going to rain all day. And it looks like the heaviest will stay farther south into southern Florida and right, right around the Florida Keys, but other than that will be partly sunny. And as we take a look at our highs, and it looks like yet again another front may try to swing in from north to south into central Florida, and that could really bring more cooler temperatures behind it. We're talking about temperatures dropping from mid-80s from mid on Sunday down into the upper 60s and low 70s uh, dur during the afternoon that day. So talking about some pretty good-looking weather, uh, not just for the Halloween weekend, but perhaps into early next week. And temperatures could be feeling a little chilly if farther north you go, as you can see from Georgia, Mississippi, and Alabama, where they're expecting some 50s and even some low 60s for highs for that day. But if we take a look at the lows for the morning of Election Day, let's see what it says on the GFS. And it looks like that it's possible that some places could, could even see temperatures get down into the low to mid 50s. Not everybody, but for, for some of us as we head towards that morning. So we're talking about some low 50s right here for Ocala on the morning of Election Day and possibly for the villages and back toward back over towards Sumterville, but others will stay in the 60s, which is not too bad to start off uh, Election Day. But notice far the north you go, it looks like temperatures keep in start a very, at least a bit chilly. Well, very chilly, I should say. Once you go towards Birmingham and Jackson and Atlanta, we're expecting temperatures to even uh, go down into the upper 30s and low 40s. So it could feel a little, again, it could feel really chilly to start off the morning of Election Day for these folks. And there could be even some patchy frost, too. So yeah, thankfully we don't have to. Thankfully we don't. We don't have to worry about any frost in Central Florida in the next several days. But with the weather here for the rest of Election Day, if you're going to be out voting on that official day, it uh, looks like we'll be mostly dry in Central Florida with lots of sunshine. But again, it cannot rule out maybe a few isolated showers along the coast of Brevard and Volusia counties. But other than that, or otherwise, I should say, we should be looking good. And as we take a look at our temperatures, and looky there, we're talking about mostly highs in the low to mid-70s. So it's going to be some perfect weather for Election Day. So if you're going to be out and about, uh, you know, doing some shopping or perhaps going to spend a day at the attractions or going to the beach on on voting day, uh, looks like it'll be in pretty good shape. And it looks like temperatures will stay even a little more cooler uh, farther north you go with 60s in Birmingham Atlanta, Jackson, Mississippi, and perhaps the western Florida panhandle, but we'll be a little warmer than that, so that's why we're calling for highs in the 70s as we head towards Election Day. So enjoy if you can. All right, the day after Election Day, this is the middle of next week, a week from tomorrow, Wednesday, November 4th. It looks like we'll maintain it. We may have to maintain a chance for a few showers possible, basically riding along I-95 from Palm Coast to Daytona and Melbourne. Maybe a few in and around portions of Orange County, but under the net, we'll keep most of our weather dry with more with more in the way of some sunshine. And as we take a look at our high temperatures, and looky there, we're expecting more of the, more of the same like we'll see on, on Election Day with more of the way of mid to upper 70s. Maybe some could, could even hit 80 from the high on next Wednesday. So lots and lots of good fall-like weather uh, uh, coming up here in the next uh, um, several days. Again, that's this weekend and early next week. All right, now heading into the second half of next week. This is for Thursday, November fifth. It looks like we'll see maybe a few. We'll see maybe a few more showers possible right along the coast of not of I ninety five and perhaps over towards I four. So we'll call about a twenty to a thirty percent coverage of a few showers that day, if the uh, GFS is correct. And uh, 
As you can see here on the GFS, some of our western part of portions of our viewing area from Marion County into parts of Lake, Sumter, and Polk counties will stay dry as well. So it's basically just along I-4 and East that we'll see maybe a few showers that day if it's right. Too early to tell, but we'll see. And as we take a look at our temperatures for highs, we will stay pretty good. So, so the fall-like weather continues for next Thursday with more in the way of 70s to near 80. All right, uh, taking you to next Friday, November 6th, it looks like we'll see a bit of a good chance for some rain if you live right along the coast of 95. So we're talking about uh, Melbourne, perhaps Daytona Beach and Palm Coast. It looks like you may see about a 40% coverage of some scattered showers for you folks. But the rest of us will be looking partly sunny, but maybe an isolated shower or two is possible. But the rain chances will stay, at least a good chance will stay farther east you go right along towards the coast. And as we take a look at our high temperatures down below, and there you go. We're talking about more of the way of mid-70s here in and around central Florida. So, yep, the cooler conditions continue. So it's going to be feeling pretty good all next week to kick off November. Of course, there will be some good days next week to do some, outdoor uh, some fun outdoor act activities, too. All right, as we, en as we enter the land of voodoo country, this is taking you to next Saturday, November 7th. It looks like we'll increase our rain chances back to about a 50% coverage for most of central Florida. Could be some heavy rains up there right along the coast of Brevard County, if, that, uh, if that's right. But something to watch. So if you got any plans for, for the 7th, uh, you may want to keep on checking back with me here on Facebook Live. Because, you know, next Saturday's forecast could change since we're entering land of voodoo. But... If it does stay that way, you may want to have the ponchos uh, for that day if it's, again, if it's right. But if we take a look at our temperatures, it looks like we'll stay mostly, uh, well, some will be in the lowest 70s, but some could even cool off into the mid to upper 60s because of the rain. And since temperatures will be cooler, I don't think we're, I don't think we're expecting any severe weather. So that's a good thing, but some could just produce maybe a few isolated thunder showers. So that's something we'll watch closely. So it's just a plain old rain we're talking about, uh, if it's right. And more rain continues for some as we head towards Sunday, November 8th. It looks like the heaviest could be uh, could be focusing just in the north of Orlando, as you can tell on the GFS. So basically from Volusia County into portions of Marion and Flacker counties, it looks like there could be some very heavy rains potentially as we head towards the 8th of November. And that could add up totals between 2 to 4 inches, is what it shows here on this model run. Others will see lesser totals, including places like Sanford, Orlando, uh, Claremont, and perhaps back down towards the south you go, where they're expecting at least mostly scattered showers. So we'll have to watch the week, at least we'll have to watch next weekend's forecast closely, because, you know, things could change, but you may never know. And our temperatures, again, stays mostly cooler, with upper 60s north and others in the 70s, which is not too bad, but like I said, the rain will continue. All right, uh, heading into two weeks from yesterday, yesterday, this is for Monday, November 9th. It looks like we'll see the rain chances lower down to about a 20 to a 30 percent coverage for some places, especially right along the coast of 95. As the heaviest rain pushes farther north into Jacksonville and near uh, Savannah, Georgia. But it looks like the rest of us may be looking dry as far as the weather goes, especially in our inland communities, if it's correct. And as we take a look at our high temperatures... And it looks like we'll start to warm things back into the mostly lower 80s. So warmer weather could return for Central Florida by then. Not way warm like we've been seeing lately, but just a bit warmer. Mostly back to average I'm talking about. So just want to let you know. So yes, the 80s do come back on the 9th, on the 9th of November if it's right. But again, it's too early to tell because we're in the land of voodoo country. So that's why things could change as we get closer. So we'll keep on checking back here for the rest of this week for any new information on the latest runs. Then heading into two weeks from today, this is for Tuesday, November 10th. It looks like more on and off showers could continue. Looks like it'll be spottier hit or miss showers is what I've seen on the GFS. So we're going to call our coverage of rain about 30% if it's correct. And as we take a look at our temperatures down below, yet again, we'll, we'll continue to warm things up into the mid 80s. Maybe some upper 80s could return for some, for some spots as we head towards uh, the 10th. But uh, again, it's just too early to tell. Like, like I've said, Many times before, it could change as we get closer, because we're still in the land of voodoo. 
And heading into Wednesday, November 11th, uh, looks like more rain continues in some places in central Florida. So we'll call, we'll call about a 40% chance for some showers and maybe perhaps a few thunderstorms if it's right as we head towards that day. But it's not going to rain all day, I don't think, but we'll see. And as we take a look at the highs for that day, yes, we'll stay warm in the 80s. But notice the farther northwest you go, there might be a cold front that may try to uh, swing in from north to south. That could allow temperatures behind it to cool off into the at least from 80s or, well, maybe step from 70s and 80s down into the 60s, possibly, perhaps near 70. So that's something we'll have to watch uh, carefully, too, if it's right. <clears throat> and as we end this update tonight, we're going to end with uh, Thursday, November 12th. It looks like we'll see a bit of a good chance for some more rain to happen around central Florida. So we're calling for about a 50% chance for some more rain as we head towards that day. Again, if the GFS is correct, but that's something we'll keep an eye out closely. And temperatures, thankfully, down below will stay mostly warmer with, with more of the way of 80s. But again, there might be another front that may try to swing in from north to south. That could allow temperatures to cool down across parts of the Mississippi Valley region with, with mostly 50s and 60s. So we'll see. All right, guys, I'm going to start wrapping up this Facebook Live feed on this Tuesday night. So that's it for the forecast video update. And I expect to have the next update again tomorrow night between 8 and 8.30 right here on Facebook Live. So hope you guys can join me then. And I'll continue, as always, by posting more notes or updates on my blog and Facebook pages 24-7. But in the meantime, hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday night, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care of, you take care of yourselves and each other, and God bless you all.